You know, I just wanted to take the time <clears throat> to wish, you know, Michael Jackson, if he was still here, a happy birthday. Um, I was a huge Michael fan. Michael was the one who actually got me into music. I was a huge fan when I was young. I remember first seeing him um, doing the moonwalk and then it got me, excuse me, got me excited. I wanted to, I wanted to move just like Mike and I could be like Mike. Not Michael Jordan, we don't care about him. Michael Jackson, he was smooth and everything, you know. I just admired him, I would buy books to learn to sing and my nan made me um, like this area so I could I could move and try and moonwalk and I spent hours trying to learn these moves and everything. And um, when, I, when we was in school, we talked about when Michael would, <clears throat> if he ever died, we'd go to his funeral. And then yeah, sadly he died and we didn't get to go, but it was something we talked about from a young age and he had that impact on us that when he died I actually shed tears like I never met him imagine a man that was so loved that you cry you never even meet the man like I was sad I always dreamed of meeting Michael and I've met quite a few celebrities but you know I never really never really been um I don't know, I was excited, but you see them and you just, I don't know, it's just like, wow, they're just normal people. I know Mike was too, but he just had a special place in my heart and his music just changed. Mike had grown men fainting, like, you know, when, when grown men see Chris Brown, they, they take weird pictures with him, but when they met Mike, they would faint. Like his music was on that type of frequency that it, it just, it, it was just loving. And um, yeah, I just, I, man, I'm just grateful that I was alive, you know, to experience some of Mike before he died. Like my friends and I, we shared great um, memories and moments, you know, with, 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 with Michael and his music. You know, we buy his CDs actually. We didn't, you know, we wanted to support Mike. <clears throat> we buy his CDs. We, you know, a lot of the, the songs I would sing, um, like when I, they, they put me on the spot, Dre sing to this girl. And uh, You Are Not Alone was the one song I would always sing. Uh, but my favorite was probably Human Nature. I loved Human Nature for some reason. It just, I don't know, it just touched me. <clears throat> but, yeah, Mike was on that vibration. I wish you could give us Mike back. Give us Mike and Prince and we don't want these little little Uzis and this demonic music. Bring back the loving music. We heard music and just wanted to be in love. Now we hear music and I don't even know a new song. To be honest, I don't even know what's a new song now. That's I don't know. Like in a long time I didn't know. Like, if you told me this was the, the hardest song, I, w I wouldn't even know. Compared to then, like, I'd watch, wait for the uh, Michael music video to come on or something. You know, you wait all day if I had to. You know, now I couldn't tell you. I don't even like this music. After Michael, I think Jamie Foxx became my inspiration. As you see, I do a lot of his, his covers. On, on on the piano, he was, I wanted to play and sing like Jamie. Back when I think peaked this, that album and, you know, he had the Jamie Foxx show. They, they, those were like my inspiration. Even the, 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 the old Usher, not the new one, but 8701 Usher and My Way and stuff. They inspired me, like listening to their music motivated me. And yeah, like, there's people that have been in my life and who have died and I've not felt nothing. It's to imagine a man that I've never met dies and 
I feel grief. Like his life has that much of an impact. What impact does your life have on the world? Hmm? Sometimes you have to think about it. Like, what's the impact of your life? Like, well, if you die, will anyone care? And I'm saying this because when my mom's mom died, I didn't have a close relationship with her. I was actually in the hospital. And I didn't go to a funeral because I was in the hospital. And I don't go to funerals anyway. But, like, I didn't feel nothing because I hadn't, there was nothing there, you know. But when my granddad died, I remember people were sad and everything, like, she didn't really have that relationship, I don't think, with people like my granddad, you know? Like, it was years for my sister to stop crying over my granddad dying. But when, when grandmother died, like, that was just it. It's kind of sad to think, like, some people's lives, you know, they were just here. But you have other people whose lives made you want to sing and to be musicians and to show love and to fall in love. Like it was on that type of frequency and vibration that you wanted to love. Um, like when I think I was in a car accident years ago and my girlfriend at the time, she took me, we broke up. But before we broke up, she had brought me, I think it was, we went to a, a caravan in, in Wayman. And at the time, I, I didn't think I was still going to be able to go. But she said, no, let's go still. Sorry. We went. And I was feeling so down. I met this gypsy lady. The gypsy lady, she read my poem. And when she read my poem, she told me things. Now I never met this gypsy lady. She didn't know I was coming. So she couldn't have known. But she told me things that was true and she was like like spot on with whatever she told me was true. And then I had to learn how she read my poem. I said, it has to be some kind of way. So I took a course. Now during this course, I think it was like three things you could pick. But one was a psychic development. And through the psychic development, there was different things. So you connect with your spirit guide. First of all, I'm a, like a spiritual person. So, you know, I like this sort of stuff. But you connect with your spirit guide. Now, she told me who my spirit guide was when I was there, but <clears throat> I never knew. I never tried to connect. I, I, I never knew. And actually, she was right, because I connected. And one was, I think, to connect with someone that had, had passed away. Now, this one required a little more, you know, um, no eating meat, no dairy, I think a few hours before you've done the meditation to connect. So before I'd done it, I didn't know what I was going to see. I was a bit skeptical. Anyway, I've done this, the meditation, whatever I was supposed to do, I followed the instructions. My granddad appeared. Um, it's in the in your mind. He appeared. And he was young again with a suit on. I described him to my sister. And um, he told me, he said, Dre, teach them how to love. This is his exact words. He said, teach them how to love. He said it twice. He said, I, I, I can't stay. I have to go. And he gave me a cuddle. And he left. And I remember telling my family. I said, oh, granddad said this. Because my family doesn't love. They don't show love. They're unloving. And I, and I told him with, with, with grand, the message he gave to me. And to this day, they still never listen to this message. But... What I'm saying, like Mike, he had that impact. He was loving. You know, I don't all the allegations against him. I, I never really believed it, cause I, I'm a loving person too. You know, I'm not saying we're perfect, but we're always. I'm a giving person. I'm a, people are always asking me for stuff, and I sometimes I give in. I've had girlfriends get mad at me, like Dre, don't give them nothing. Like stop helping people. I've always been blessed, you know, and, and a lot of my blessings, don't think they just fell from the sky. A lot of these blessings are a result of hard work and determination. Like, don't think I just woke up and could play the piano or sing. Like, everything I've worked towards, I put the effort in. 
now I'm at the age where if you want a trim, go watch a video, go to barber school, go to college, do MVQ level two, three, do whatever. Don't ask me unless that money is right now. My time of helping people is over. I'm on to new things. A cousin just now just asked me for a trim. I do not mind doing things. I do not mind doing it for free. But I have other things to do. I'm not sitting up here, keep cutting, tattooing, doing different things that I've invested time in and learning my time to learn. You can watch YouTube and learn how to trim your hair, how to cook, how to play the guitar. You can learn all these things online for free. If you would like to get better and better, hire a tutor, hire a teacher, someone that can help you to advance your skills. If you aren't willing to invest your money in yourself, I'm not willing to waste my time doing things for you because you come, you want me to do a service for you. What do I get out of it? I don't mind blessing, but after a while, you have to bless me too. Like, I have friends that do whatever for me. I can call one and say, oh, I want these Jordans, these Nikes. They would give them straight to me. I'll pay them whenever. But I still tip them sometimes. Not every time. But I still say, oh, I appreciate you looking out for me. Um, here, here's an extra hundred or something. I appreciate the service that they give me. They don't have to do it. If you come in with this with your long hands out, I'm not that loving no more. Mike, could, Mike, maybe Mike is. Anyway, I want a bit off topic, but I just wanted to say thank you to Mike for the years that you know of good music he's given to me and to the world and the, and the impact that his life had on the world and the vibration of love that he showed throughout the world. I just wanted to thank him and make a video on, you know, how, how you, you influenced me and um, how you've inspired me to be a musician. I just want to say thank you. May you rest in peace, mate.